Hastu is from Yogyakarta in Indonesia. She had a dream. Hastu wanted to be a software developer. But she thought that would be almost impossible because Hastu is hearing impaired. Then she met Tasya in her local Indonesian developer student club. Tasya took the time to mentor Hastu in mobile app development. Fascinated by what she learned, Hastu went ahead and dedicated her time building a mobile app that facilitated connections between blind and sight volunteers. She aspires to be a CTO of an Indonesian startup in future. Hastu continues to build apps and solve problems for the local communities. A question often asked is why are global communities so important? The last one year of the pandemic has told us why. Why it's more important than ever to build global communities that are interconnected, build global digital communities. In my role as head of developer programs at Google, I have been working on building and nurturing and growing global communities around developer technologies. This has involved building communities that span 2000 chapters in 130 countries, reaching over 3 million developers every year. Creating opportunities similar to what Hastu found in her local community. Till today, this continues to be the most fulfilling part of my job. Having a large, actively engaged and global network is being seen by companies, both big and small, as being central to their strategy. One challenge this involves, however, is how to scale globally. My experience has taught me that in order to scale globally, one has to think locally. Let's understand how. A commonly agreed definition of a community is a small or large social unit that has things like norms, values, and and other traits in common. When scaling a community, there are three areas to focus on. The first one is size, with the goal of creating a large community. Next is engaged. We want to create community that's engaging with each other and is self-sustaining. Finally, diversity and inclusive, having a diverse and inclusive community. Let's start by looking at how to grow the size of your community. The idea here is sum of parts. To have a large community, one needs to identify which countries, regions, cities, towns and villages need to be prioritized for setting up and growing the community. Identifying the key influencers at the micro level and building a strong partnership with them. One of my first projects at my current company was to set up and build developer groups in India. Now India is a large country with 1.4 billion people and tens of millions of developers. To get started, I first looked at traffic coming to our website and identified which were the metro regions from where users were accessing our developer content. As a next step after that, we prioritize those regions to establish and grow our community. We went local. Over the years, this is an, appro this is an approach I know many other community practitioners have continued to take when they want to grow the size of their community. Next, growing engaged communities, making sure they are self-sustaining. We live in a world of different needs and opportunities. What is interesting for your audiences in Japan is likely very different from what is interesting for your audiences in Brazil. My own experience has taught me that when working with developers in Japan, there is a lot of interest for things like gaming technologies, 
On the other hand, in Brazil, there is renewed interest around cloud technologies and work happening around that. So when, when someone wants to build up a, a more engaged community, the question that needs to be thought about is, what kind of content does your community wants to talk about? What kind of support do they need? What kind of connections do they want to build with other local communities and other local stakeholders and sponsors? Taking one size fits all approach never works while answering these questions. What works is prioritizing the needs of your community at local level. Finally, how can we not just create the largest community, but also the most diverse and inclusive one? Not create a walled garden, but a park where everyone is welcome. When looking at doing this globally, there are some challenges which are universal, like underrepresentation of women in tech. For many other elements of diversity and inclusion, however, the definition changes country by country and region by region. What is defined as underrepresented community in one region can be drastically different from what is defined as underrepresented community in another region, sometimes even neighboring countries. As an example, what constitutes underrepresented groups in Indonesia is very different from what constitutes as underrepresented groups in the Philippines. When looking at making your community diverse and inclusive, ask the question, who are the underrepresented groups at the local level that you'd like to empower? Only then you can claim that you have a diverse and inclusive community globally. With the, with the communities that I currently work with, with the developer communities I currently work with, there is still a lot more to do. And as we'll continue to scale globally, we'll continue to think locally.